Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Love and Understanding Sunday Gathering, our circle of love. And as always, I invite you to turn within with me, and let's begin with a prayer. Let's know the divine energy of God that we call love rises up within each and every one of us, allows us to think, speak, and see clearly, allows us to see that each and every one of us are brothers and sisters, and that we are so intimately connected, just like a regular family, because we are a family. So we bless each other, we bless this entire planet and the universe. We know that what we do here is significant because what we're doing is focusing our consciousness on truth, focusing ourselves on truth, love, and well-being, being compassionate and understanding. This is our purpose. This is our charge. And we accept the mantle. Thank you, Father. And so it is. Amen. So we're blessed today to have one of our own, Lin Fuqua, back with us. And she's going to open us up with a chant. Welcome, Lin. Thank you. Um... Let's see, what is happening here? Okay. As usual, I don't exactly know what's going to happen here, so let's just take a moment. And so it is, and so it is, and so it is, and so it is, amen. And so it is, and so it is, and so it is, and so it is, amen. Thank you, Lynn. That was beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Wow. Well, 
Today's reading is from uh, Father Richard Rohr, from a book of daily meditations called From Yes End. Jesus himself was a consummate analyst of human nature, really a brilliant psychologist, and named the very issues that we have rediscovered today and called denial, defensive mechanisms, projections, and the shadow self, as well as the necessity of inner healing of hurts to avoid continuing the hurt in others. Today's talk is about spiritual therapy and um, it's different than psychological therapy. It involves pieces of it, but it encompasses more. We're made up of mind, body, and soul. And it's not just the mind and body that we need to focus on. We have to integrate the totality of the individual together for a healing. And healings are necessary on this life journey because as we move on this journey, there are hurts that we accumulate. There are traits that we've taken up. There are ideas that may be wrong that we've embodied. And Healings are about releasing all of those so that we don't pass it on to others. And we don't continue proliferating the same feelings that we have in our own life. It's a very important aspect of our life. And I remember being called to be a minister and knowing that there was a lot of studying that I had to do, and there was a lot of training I had to do. And part of that training was to become a spiritual practitioner first. And I spent four years doing that. Now, we have other people who are licensed practitioners on this, on this call who are ministers. We have Reverend Bonnie and Reverend, Reverend Doris. But Brother Ed Munter, who's our music director, Jim Wheeler, they're also licensed practitioners as spiritual therapists. And going through that training, what it taught me was, yes, to be able to see things that I could assist others in their healing with, but to recognize that I probably had those same things in me. And that my real training wasn't just to look at others and to learn how to heal them, but it had to begin with me. It had to begin with me doing an introspection, me doing what we call inner work. And what is that? That is work where we take the time to really take an inner journey to review our life and see the areas that we've been hurt in, where we have been misled, where we have, have hurt others, and learn how to move backwards from that, find the challenge, Heal that challenge so that we no longer move forward hurting others. And as a spiritual therapist, you can then help others move through their own process. That's a major part of what I do. I get calls constantly. I have counseling sessions constantly. Because this is such a very important part of life. And I would venture to say that the majority of people out there don't go through this process. 
And that's the reason why there is a repetition in their life of the same challenge, be it a different face or a different job or a different boss or a different person. But it's over and over and over, you know, like that hamster going around that spinning wheel. It's not getting anywhere. It's just continuing on in the same cycle. And until we get clear, until we are willing to go through whatever challenges we need to go through, go through whatever pain and cathartic activity that we need to go through to be able to release that, it's going to continue to appear in our life. So it's, it's a very... It's an individual journey, number one. And it's one that takes a lot of bravery, a lot of courage. Because when you begin to look at yourself, you may not really like some of the things that you see. You may start to understand the hurt that others have done to you and that you've passed on to others. And then there has to be that willingness to change. This is what our life is all about. Our life here is about learning and growing and helping others. Giving others that hand to be able to lift them up as you've been lifted up. If you're on this, this call right now, then you've probably started that journey or you're moving through. Because we, we never really finish that journey. Because if we finish the journey of total awakening, we wouldn't need this body. We descend, just like Jesus did. You wouldn't need the body. But we need this body because we need the experiences that we're getting with every awakening process that we go through. Think about things. I want you to think about this. How many times when someone has said that you were responsible for something, how many times did you say, no, it wasn't me, it was them? It wasn't me, it was this other thing, that occurrence was what happened. It wasn't me. How willing were you to take responsibility? This is part of what this awakening process does. It allows you to see the things that you've been challenged with, the things that you've made issue with, and be willing to be responsible for it and then willing to go through the process of forgiveness and change. That's transformational. That changes your entire, not just your viewpoint of life, but the activity of life that you experience from that point on. You're no longer blaming people. You're seeing what you have to do to make a difference. That's astronomical for so many people. A willingness to take responsibility and a willingness to look backwards to see how the things that you're doing right now are linked to what happened before. I remember my own path. It was extremely cathartic for me. I was very blessed to have a, an amazing spiritual therapist from, from the Agape International Spiritual Center known as uh, Asia Mason. She was amazing. She walked me through to find where that challenge that I was feeling, where that 
that issue that I was having. Number one, where did I feel it in my body? And then once I felt that spot in my body, she had me close my eyes and go backwards. When was the first time that I felt that? And instantly, bang, I was back in a spot where I was being beat by my mother. And I said, my God, this is the reason why I've acted this way with other people. What I had to do first was I had to forgive her. I had to be willing to let any animosity, any issue, any challenge that I had, I had to be willing to let it go. I was very blessed to be able to, at that time, my mother was going through the last stages of Parkinson's. And I got to sit and to talk to her privately. And I looked her in the eyes and I said, you remember when I was a kid and how you used to beat me? And her eyes just opened up like saucers and her, her mouth opened up like she wanted to say something, but she was afraid to say it. And I just looked her dead in the eyes and I said, I forgive you. And then my father came back in the room from being outside and we just continued our conversation. That was transformational for me. That allowed me to totally let go and to move into another space, to not pass on that hurt from a generational point of view or to anyone. Because what we do is when we're hurt and we hold it inside, the tendency is to lash out and to give it to others. It's like you're getting even. But if you can end that, if you can cut that cord, your life and the life of others that are going to experience you totally changes. This is what we're here to do. We're here to learn, to grow, to heal and to be a healing presence for others along the way. You don't have to be a licensed spiritual therapist to help someone else. You have to be someone to listen. You have to be someone who will be there for them when they're moving through their, their darkest moments. Not judging, not giving advice, but just there. they know that there's a strength that they can hold on to. Every one of us has stuff inside that we've accumulated. Now, some have worked their things out. Most of us haven't. And I'm sure that I will find other things along the way that I need to do. But the primary ones, the ones that were making the, the biggest effects in my life, were totally related to that and changed. I changed. My life changed. And I'm in a space now where I can help others. I can give someone a hand and say, don't worry, you're not alone. And if you're willing to go through this, I promise you that the other side of this is a peace that you may not to this point in time have ever experienced. It's just waiting for you. It's waiting for you. But you have to be willing to move through 
the potential pain and hurt. It took me quite a while to get through that process. But when not only did I get through the process, I had the wonderful ability to make amends in person. There are people that I've helped along the way that haven't been able to do that, but we've helped them make amends in spirit, make amends in consciousness, talking to that person in one-on-one -on -one in their mind and truly letting go, truly forgiving. Father, forgive them. They know not what they're doing. That rolled through my head so much because what I found out later on was that this was the way that my own mother's father treated her. And she was simply passing it down. But it was going to end right there. It would end with me. Make your determination that whatever it may be, whatever hurt you've been through, that you're willing to find someone who will move you through the process and to pray for you. To, because that spiritual aspect of knowing that you're being guided and supported, not just by the individual who's helping you, but by a power that created this universe, a power that is love in itself. It's the dynamic energy that holds this entire universe together that's inside of you that connects you to everything. That's so powerful. And it's that spiritual power that can move mountains. It's always our choice. It's always, are we willing to do the work to move through and to learn and to grow? It's easy to kind of say, no, no, I'm not going to do that. No, why do I have to do that? And then you just proliferate and continue that same hurt to other people. Or you can say, no more. It ends here. It ends with me. And there's a freedom, not just for myself, but for everyone that I communicate with. I'm setting everyone free. That's what this is all about. So I encourage you, to find a spiritual practitioner or minister who can sit with you and move you through that process to find the areas in your life that to this point in time, you may not even understand that you're reacting right now to things that were happened before. Now I see Reverend Bonnie on this call because I know she's she's a she's a licensed therapist, she's a spiritual therapist, she's a minister. She used to do this with people all the time. What a blessing. This is life-changing. Far more than any other talk or anything else, it's not about you hearing something. It's about you being willing to do something. Your choice. So let's get still right now. Let's know that as we make a choice, that the heavens open up for us. That whatever we need, whatever resources are required to transform our lives, to begin the process of healing, are right now approaching us are right now allowing us to be the greatest that we could yet to be. Let's know this truth. 
Let's embrace this truth. Let's look for those who will help us so that they can take our hands and walk us down the path. But we have to be willing to do the work. We have to be willing to see the truth of what has happened to us and be willing to let it go. Be willing to forgive. Be willing to open ourselves up to the infinite possibilities of spirit because we don't want to pass on hurt to anyone else. I accept this for you all. I know that you have the, the courage, the wisdom, and the power to move through this process. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Spirit. Thank you, life. And so it is. Amen. Brother Ed, you want to give us something? Loosely based on my belief I'm challenged to wrestle the illusion Of everything I think that I should be I have placed these goals before me Somewhere in the distance Now they keep me running to be free It's a good day when I win over The drama I've created when I can stand my ground at least And it's a bad day when I'm sucked into the vortex of the dream And dragged down to the belly of the beast and The passing of the days and the passing of my judgment in the passing of all these things I do In the rising and the falling You know nothing really changes Nothing changes but my point of view I am awakening again with a name to the from the spell that I've been under I am awakening again awakening and I'm opening the kingdom with this tiny key of wonder Again, we 
Weaving through many ways I choose to see the world As I try to hold it in my hand There is the steady constant stream of the way it really is The mysterious unfolding of the plan I crack the noise and drink the silence I pierce the veil, touch the truth and shed my skin In the dominion of the moment I am timeless and in the stillness I am lifted by the fullness from within Awakening again, awakening from the spell that I've been under. I'm awakening again, awakening and I'm opening the kingdom with this tiny key of one. My possessions, they seem funny to me now. All these things I collect to mark my space. I must have thought these things that just clutter up my room could define me and hold me to this place. There is 
wisdom in not knowing. There is freedom in release. There is power in surrender to the source. And there's a sailing ship of wonder upon an ocean unfolding, and it's following an unknown course. And there's a gift that I've been given. Something I cannot deny The fact is I'm unique Just like everybody else Giving back to the infinite supply Thank you, Brother Ed. Well, this is our conscious sharing time. I'm going to put up the donation information. Just to remind you, we have a new website. It's www.lovingyou.org. If you want to make a secure donation, you can do it online there. You use Venmo, Zelle, Mel, check, whatever you feel like. But again, I, first, I want to say thank you for your support. And secondly, I want to say whatever you do, you love make sure the energy of love that is God itself is inside of that gift because whatever you give always returns to you multiplied <clears throat> so let's just bless the gift and the giver and just know that all is unfolding in God's perfect order now and forever Amen well we have a special because we, we have a second song today. Our, uh, our other congregant, Sharon Smith, is going to bless us with a song. Good morning. Good morning, Sharon. Thank you. Um, I'm going to sing a song this morning um, that I think is very beautiful, uh, written and composed by a lady, um, that I heard sing it at Agape. Um, it's kind of a spiritual journey song, so I'm going to ask everyone to kind of listen with uh, intent. The song is entitled, If It Be Thy Pleasure. If it be thy pleasure, let me grow as a tender earth in the meadows of thy grace 
Let the gentle winds of thy will master me up and bend me into conformity with thy pleasure. La da da. And my stillness may be wholly directed by thee. La da da, la da da, la da 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 da. If it be thy pleasure, let me grow as a tender herb in the meadow. Of thy grace, let the gentle winds of thy will master me up and bend me into conformity with thy pleasure. La da da, la da da, la da da da. If it be thy pleasure, let me grow as a tender herb. Thank you. I guess I was on mute. <laughs> All right, so let's say this together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. And all is well. Amen. Yeah. I want to thank everyone for being here. And if you're watching us on YouTube, this is not the end of our service. We have an entire other section where everyone who's online right now has an opportunity to share their insights. We learn from each other. So if you'd like to join us any Sunday at before 9.50 a.m. Pacific time, you go to our website that was just there, www.loveandyou.org, and there's a topic, and down after you read the topic of what we're going to talk about, there's a Zoom link. Press the link at that time, you'll be let in, and then you too can be sharing. If you want to, you don't have to, but we'd love for your presence to be here. So please join us. So let me finish off with a prayer, and then we'll go into our sharing.
So how good it is right now to be able to stop and to remember that the healing presence and power and love of God is everywhere and especially is deep within each and every one of us. And we allow it to move through us and to heal us in every way, shape, and form. And I'd like to include in this prayer Paula's daughter, Whitney, who is recovering from an operation. Let's know that wholeness and well-being are her birthright. And that there's peace of mind with her, her mother, Paula, about her, her daughter. And that all unfolds easily and effortlessly. Let's bless our, one of the, our congregate couples, Caprice and Al, who are celebrating their 39th wedding anniversary. And just know that the two of them are such magnificent angels to us and to everyone that they come in contact with. And that the blessings that they share continue on many, many more years to come. And for all of you who are willing to step out and to be healed, to know that you take the first steps, you've already started, and that it unfolds with ease and grace, and that healing is, is unfolding in this very moment because you've set the intention. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And so it is. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. I'm going to stop the recording. We're going to start our sharing time. <laughs>